for joining us. The guy sitting to my left, that's Dr. David. And uh, we have been off for a while. David. It seems like forever. Did you yeah. reintroduce yourself to all of our staff? And no, but there are some new people here, I think. I know, okay. yes. But we have a whole series of new programs. But it's amazing, while you were off, I don't think the people watching knew it because they were grabbing me and saying, man, I love those programs. And I'm going, <laughs> you've seen that one before, I I've think. I've got quite a few emails over the last few weeks. Uh, every Friday about uh, 1030, uh, email will come in. Love the program. It was great today and encouraging words from the viewers. That yeah. is neat. And we're going to talk about Proverbs and speech today. This is part one. Get your Bibles out, okay? I've got my big Bible here. I actually got another one here over it because we've got all of this. This program, basically, if you're not uh, sitting there with your Bible, and I know many of you are using these electronic Bibles. Right. <laughs> I see people using that, and no offense, okay? But somehow, when I see them in the pulpit reading from, they hold it up, you know, and I'm going, you know what? It just don't feel right. It's strange for me to be in the pulpit looking at the audience, and some of them are using their phones for their Bibles. Yes. So they're looking at their phones while you're reading the Bible or looking up and preaching. It's, it's, it's taking a while to get used to that everything is digital. This is changing so fast. Things are moving in such uh, fast pace, uh, PC groups, and what's happening politically and so forth. It's just, it's neat to get into Proverbs. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I wrote this down because I was reading uh, in a book. It's called The Healing Power of Doing Good. And it says, practicing kindness just two hours a week. And I'm coordinating this with Proverbs because it seems like a book. Because I, I, for the last 30 years, I've read uh, a portion of Proverbs, Psalms, Old Testament, New Testament. And it really helps you every time oh, yes. I get into Proverbs especially. Uh, it says uh, that uh, the healing power of doing good. So if you want to get that book, find out Amazon, wherever. Uh, practicing kindness just two hours a week can bring about significant health improvements. And it says it includes relief from sleeplessness, mm -hmm. uh, acid stomach, headaches, back aches, Depression. No, oh, it's interesting. Yeah, I could certainly see that 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 borne out because the Bible talks about what a what a good heart does. It's like a medicine to yeah. the soul, and kindness comes from a good heart. Years ago, I I had depression problems. I mean, bad depression problems. And I was told visit nursing homes, and I did. I'm telling you, that's therapy. Mm -hmm. You walk out of there and you go. What am I depressed about? Yeah. <laughs> Are you nuts? It's amazing. But really, it's, it's but that's kind of a kindness type, type sure thing. Is. Sure it is. Uh, I was just noticing this, Dave, and, and you know, it's kind of neat to be next to a guy that <laughs> everything he reads he remembers, okay? But it, you'll find it in Proverbs, and I'm sure you remember this, is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's mm -hmm. in Proverbs uh, 1. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lead not into your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. These are actually verses that we all know. Six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. Uh, another one. Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Another one. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Another one. There is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Another one, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Another one, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. And another one, who can find a virtuous wife, for her worth is above rubies. You know, the great thing about uh, the book of Proverbs is you don't have to memorize it in terms of a, uh, a rigid program where you, you get the reference and the verse and the little topic. Just by reading through Proverbs yeah. all the yeah. time, those statements get imprinted in your heart and mind. And then at a time when you need it, yes. a proverb will come to you and give you a point of wisdom 
to cause you to react differently in a situation than you normally would have wow. because of the wisdom in Proverbs. And I think anybody can memorize it regardless of their intellectual capacity in terms of their memory ability just by redundancy, just by reading Proverbs yeah. all the time, those verses get put into your soul and they enhance your wisdom. Have you ever been to a, a, pl a place in your life when you read a proverb and it like the Holy Spirit answered that place in your life? Oh, many times, especially with proverbs. I've been in scenarios where just before I responded or initiated an action or a statement, a proverb would come to my mind and alter what I was going to do. Wow. And then I could see the result and, and once again have confirmed the Word of God is true and you can depend on it. And you know, and more so than ever nowadays with Twitter and Facebook, People, because words, speech, we're talking about today, speech is not just what comes out of your mouth, it's what you type on the keyboard. And people's lives are being destroyed by what they're saying because they're not saying it with wisdom. And they can put something on their Twitter account and it causes a, a great turmoil. They can put it on their Facebook and lose a job. Um, they can not get um, accepted into a university because of what's on their Facebook. So speech and wisdom is more important today than ever before it, when your words never fade away. It's amazing how people use Twitter because it used to be, you know, you, you'd make some statement, you go, whoa, boy, I'm sure glad no one heard that. Right. Well, they immediately, like you say, go to the, and type it, and it's there forever. Right. And it's a perfect example of what we'll see in a minute when Proverbs says, uh, don't say everything that's in your mind. It, it's a yeah. warning not to do it. Yeah. Twitter and Facebook, especially Twitter, are, and uh, are opportunities to say everything that comes to your mind. Wow. And it just opens you up to foolishness and attack and you're laying landmines for yourself. And the Twitter is an exact opposite of biblical approach to living. Well, let's get into the word. Proverbs, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. And, and that's to sort of bring up the idea of how important it is that as Christians, as Bible believers, we allow the Word of God to affect what we say. And you've been in churches long enough to know most church problems revolve around something somebody is saying and something that somebody is hearing. And then it stirs and they talk and, they, and then the, and entire church families can be split over the tongue, yeah. what we say. Isn't it amazing that I know you have a core of people in your church and you've had this over the years because you've been a pastor and you were a pastor in Dunedin for a while, then you moved to Buffalo, New York, which Colleen, our daughter, did not enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a great work there and you even founded a church yes. that is going strong it's go, it's today. going great today. Yes. Yeah, we were yes. there visiting it and it's just a wonderful church. And then you came to Florida, so you've been around a lot. But isn't it amazing how there's a core group of people and you, you make friends with them as a pastor and then all of a sudden, just as you said, this, this thing uh, that's called the tongue, something goes on, and the people that you would think would never, ever come against you, all of a sudden tell you, I'm leaving. Right. I don't like what I heard, and you go, do you want to ask me what ha happened? No, I, I believe it. Right. And off they go. W what is with that? Well, you know, the Bible says a talebearer separates chiefest friends. So even close friends can be separated by somebody who comes in and says things that have some element of truth but probably aren't the total truth and they paint a picture that convinces one friend to turn away. It happens all the time. And if we're not careful, we, we're doing it to people by what we say. So we have to be careful that our words are, are not, first of all, inaccurate and they're not gossiping and slandering, but we don't really have any reason to be talking negative about somebody else. and and being something that separates those two friends, because it happens to us all the time. Uh, you, you, it, it, it talks about, uh, and, and this is what it says in the New Living Translation, those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Now, <laughs> there, there's a lot of people, I, I got a lot of faults. It would take a lifetime to hear my faults. But one of them isn't liking to talk. Mm -hmm. People don't believe it, but I, I could spend days never saying a word. But there are people, I mean, my wife will get calls and family members, and they can talk for 45 minutes. And I'm saying to myself as I'm passing them and they're still talking, how do you do that? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, when I was in grade school, somebody had carved into a desk. And as I'm in third grade or fourth grade, and it's carved in the desk. Better to keep your mouth shut and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. That was carved in the desk? Yeah, it was carved in And I didn't know for years it was a Bible. It was a <laughs> proverb. And I, it made such an impact on me that, you know, the, the less you say, oh. the wiser you appear. Because yeah. the more you say, you reveal your ignorance. Yeah. And I've seen that played out so many times that if you sit quietly and listen, people take you as being a wise person. But if you're always spouting off your opinion, commenting on everything, they begin to see all the flaws in your logic yeah. and your thinking, and you go down in their sight. Yeah. Uh, but we don't think that. We think, well, if I don't tell everybody what I'm thinking, they'll never know I'm smart. If you keep your mouth shut, they will assume that you're intelligent. But a talker cannot no. keep <laughs> quiet, No, right? there's, there's some other but motivations there. Th there's yeah. a gene there, yeah. and it's, it's a talking gene. And they've got to talk, and they've got to talk to somebody, and they've got to have that communication going. So Proverbs would be a good one to read daily for, for a talker. And, and for a non-talker. It's good for everybody. There, there's so much wisdom in it. And this phrase, death and life and the power of the tongue, just to make sure we understand, that's not talking about creative power. It's talking about impacting power. Y you and I cannot create life by what we say. We can't make something manifest in Can front I of us. Can I move God by something I say? No. God is well, wait not, a minute. Wait a minute. I'm hearing that all, the, I'm hearing that all yeah. the time. God, if, if you want to move God, do something. Yeah. No, God, Sorry, I keep God is it, but sovereign. God is not influenced by the will of man. He influences our wills. But he has told us he holds things back. He has things in reserve that he will release to us if we do such and such. But, but that's there, not us changing his will. His but, will was always the same. But there is power in the tongue, right? For yes. example, for example, say you, you come in here and you're feeling like gangbusters. Right. And I say, Dave you feel okay? Your, your lips are kind of pale? Uh, you coming down with something? No, I, f I felt, you know, man, you just, you, you look like something's going on. That tongue, that expression, or even if I, if I come at you with something that is uh, an accusation or something and you felt good. So the tongue has the ability to change your whole chemistry, doesn't it? If I allow it. See, that's why a tongue has an impacting power, not a creative power. It can't impose its power, but the person who's hearing it, if I choose to listen to your words and give them weight, yes, it will affect me. But if I think that you're just a out-of-touch moron, I don't care what you think, your words have no bearing on me. But if I value your words, or for some reason I need to hear what you're saying, and I receive it, that's when it has power. But if I disregard it as being false or inaccurate, the words don't, so we're not victims of people's words. Okay. Uh, words are influential. They move and they, and they pull and they tug, but we still have the ability to respond in the Holy Spirit and reject um, improper words and negative words that are thrown at us. We don't, we don't have to uh, receive them. Okay, how do you then not accept that? I mean, I mean, because it, I mean, even if a moron, moron says it to you, there's, there's an impact. Yes. Well, it, I think it comes in your, in your walk with the Lord on a daily basis when, you, when you're praying and you get your self-esteem or your self-view or whatever you want to call that. When you get that from the Lord in prayer, then it doesn't matter if what somebody might say to you that day because you're getting your sense of who you are from the Lord. And then, but as believers, the Bible tells us to encourage and edify and provoke one another to good works. So there is a, uh, a positive aspect to that dynamic that the Lord in, uh, instructs us to do that to one another, yeah. to provoke, promote, and encourage. Never discourage, never criticize, never condemn, but to encourage and provoke and edify because so we're designed to receive truth from each other. But we can also receive lies. That's why we have to have biblical discernment to know what the lie is so we don't receive it. Next one, uh, uh, Proverbs 6, 2. You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. And that goes back to how many times we have created our own predicament, our own problem by what we said. If we had not have said something, and that could be as simple as in an argument with, uh, with a spouse at home. If we would learn not to always retaliate, you know, hostility yeah. for hostility, yeah that a soft answer turns away wrath. Right. If we could internalize those truths and not always respond, we wouldn't put ourselves in so many negative situations because we said something we should not have said. Uh, does this have the connotation that, yeah, and, and, yeah, and I'm sure you've had many times, uh, I'm thinking about 
co-signing for my son or, or this close friend of mine is really having a huff, tough time and he needs to have a, an automobile, his one that's falling apart and his credit is bad and would like me to co-sign. That's a snare. You are yeah, yes. That, that would be a, a commitment you have made that puts you at the mercy of the other person's ability to keep up the end of the, of the yeah. uh, agreement. And that means that you are no longer in control of your own destiny. You just handed it to somebody. So you've laid a trap for yourself, whether or not it springs on yeah. you or not, but it, it, it is a, uh, the Bible discourages that behavior. And it, says, it says in verse 2 in that same chapter 6, if you have trapped yourself by your agreement and are caught by what you said, follow my advice and save yourself, for you have placed yourself at your friend's mercy. Yes. And it doesn't mean your friend is deceitful or your friend is uh, um, um, devious, but they're weak. And if, if your strength is at the mercy of somebody else's weakness, your, your strength is only as strong as the weakest link in a chain. And so we are to protect that. Now, that doesn't mean if you have, say, $50,000 and you want to loan 1000 5000 to somebody, that doesn't matter if you lose it or not, you can afford it. It's not discouraging that. And it's not discouraging generosity and helping right. people. But placing your prosperity at risk, your welfare at risk, on a, on a roll of the dice kind of help, yeah. that's not a wise thing to do. I, I, I listened to Dave Ramsey, and he has great, great advice. And, and, and a person was calling and said that they had co-signed for a close friend of his that had, had some land. And so he could get it. And it, it was causing conflict because the guy was not making the payments which made him responsible for the payments. Right. And he said, so this is breaching your friendship. And the guy said, yes. He said, I'll tell you what you do. And the guy had told him that he was not a poor guy. He had hundreds of thousands of dollars. He said, I'll tell you what you do. Tell him it's paid for. Give him a, a bill of sale. It's done. Now, let's, let's continue being friends, but don't ask me to do anything like that again. Okay? So now we're still friends. It's paid off. It's done. He said that'll take the whole pressure away from you. So it's basically what you just said. If you've got that kind of opportunity, it's better you give it yeah, if and you can, never expect it back. If you can release it, release it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's continue. So the power that this death and life that is in the tongue, one of them is that good words can bring joy. Proverbs 12, 25 says, Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. And this good word, it's implied, it's coming from outside. So it would be, say, if you're struggling with depression, I could give you a good word that can make your heart glad. It's a ministry that we are to be doing one to another. So it's the power of our words. And Proverbs 15, 1 and 4 and 16, 23, they are, all those verses say basically the same thing, that our words have a tremendous ability to lift somebody up. When I was in 10th um, grade at Sarasota High School, I was a, a cornerback for the football team, and I was one of the few 10th graders on the team uh, in that day, and it was all, all seniors and juniors, and it was the very first game of the season, and the quarterback threw a touchdown pass to the guy that I was supposed to be covering, the very first play of the game, the first play of my high school career, and uh, we lost the game seven to six. So that touchdown is why we lost the game, first play of the game. Well, I went and sat on the bench. It was my very first game. I felt terrible. Like I was just, you know, that nobody on the team would like me. The captain of the team came walking up and sat next to me, and he said, Dave, don't worry about it. He put his arm around and just did that. He said, I made stupid mistakes in that in my first year. He goes, don't let it bother you. Well, that good word wow. made my, and I, I was able to get up, didn't make a mistake the rest of the game, and had a great season, but it all hinged on that one moment when I sat on that bench thinking, oh, my goodness, I've just hurt my team, and the captain came and gave me a good word. That's what we're to be doing for each other, a good word that can take a heart that's discouraged and make it glad once again. Write down uh, all of these passages that we're uh, covering because we're not reading the passage. Dave may, may allude to some of them. But take the references down, and after this is finished, take some time in Proverbs to just bathe yourself in this wisdom, basically words that will go with you for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, and the rest of the year, okay? So it, it, it kind of reminds us that so many times we get so busy and in such a hurry 
that we just forget to take some time. Be still and know that I am God. Just, uh, yeah, you know, I, I have a hard time sometimes chilling out, as they say. To, mm -hmm. I'm sure you do because your motor's running all the time. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you bring that into action for yourself? To stop and take time to meditate on the Lord? I have to, I have to schedule it in or I'll get so busy <laughs> doing things that I, that I just... That sounds funny. I schedule in time with the Lord. Oh, I have to. I, I have to make it part of my daily regimen to, to do that, or I, um, I get too busy. And even at that, I have to sort of do it five things at a time because I'm, I'm a little yeah. ADD-ish. Yes. So even when I'm studying for messages, I study for two or three messages at a time as my mind is bouncing around, but it's focused on the Word of God. But if I don't do that, I'd be doing something all day. I'm a doer, yeah. and I have to tell myself, you know, God's not pleased so much by doing as He is by fellowship with Him. Yes. And He, he wants yes. us to listen and talk to Him. I, I, I keep reminding myself, obedience is greater than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So many times we think doing, 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 all that sacrifice and doing this and whatever, He, he wants obedience. Right. And obedience begins in the heart. Okay, number four. Number four, seductive words lead to sexual immorality. What is that and, talking about? Uh, in Proverbs 2.16, it's talking about wisdom and discretion and honesty and, and understanding will deliver you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. Now, this is important for married men and, and single men as well, because we often in our culture think that men are seduced purely by appearance, that they are almost helpless by a certain look or appearance. But in all the... Um, marriages that I've counseled where there has been a, an impropriety, an infidelity, or an affair, it usually involves conversation. Uh, the, the man is seduced by the words the woman throws out, and a bridge is built that opens up a door that it always turns sexual, but the initial temptation is not sexual. It's not necessarily visual. The interest might be visual, but what builds that bridge is words, and all those uh, verses there in Proverbs I have listed under that are all referring to the, the, um, the bait and switch of sexual immorality. It offers pleasure and freedom and joy for a moment, but right behind it is death and destruction, and it begins with the words of the seducer. And whether it's male or female, but because we uh, tend to think that men are motivated only by sight, we disregard that and think those words are safe. They're not safe. It's interesting. I, uh, in a New Living Translation, if you want to read something that will impact your life, Proverbs 5, New Living Translation. In fact, I got it marked in my Bible. I remember telling a person a long time ago that was involved in something, and I said, you need to read Proverbs 5. Get yourself a New Living Translation and read it. Listen to what it says in, in Proverbs 5. The lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And those lips are talking about what comes out of them, yeah. the, the yeah. words. And that's how um, many people get seduced into immorality who would never do that. In their mind, yeah. I'm never going to commit that. Well, they don't just jump from here to there. They walk there through words. Words are that bridge to immoral behavior. Wow. Number five. Uh, perverse words can break the spirit. Proverbs 15, 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. And perverse words would be uh, anything that is uh, an alteration of what is good or what is true. Uh, perverse doesn't necessarily mean the way we often use it in our culture, being a sexual oddity. Yeah. Perverse means anything that is a deviation from true and right. So our words that are perverted from speaking the truth or speaking what is right or what's appropriate or what's kind can actually do damage and break somebody's wow. spirit. Wow. But a wholesome tongue brings life and, and energy. Let's move on to six. Uh, this is a great one. Too many words can cause trouble. Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. And if you don't mind, I'd like to read a number of those verses yeah, because we've got about three minutes. Left. It's probably the most important one. Proverbs 10, 19 says, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refrains his lips is wise. Wow. And then I'll stop there. The other verses say basically the same thing. There are times we are not to be talking. 
that if we reduce our words, we will reduce our trouble. Wow. Number seven. And some words should be refrained. Proverbs 9, 7, 8. He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love you. And then there's other um, passages in Proverbs that say basically the same thing. There's a time to rebuke somebody, and there's a time not to. And the Bible tells us not to cast our pearls before swine, as Jesus said. It's a reference to giving truth to somebody who is not willing or ready to receive it. Not only will it, it fall without effect, they will rebel against it, wow. and they will hate the speaker of truth. Yeah. So sometimes, although we want to tell somebody, don't do that, or, here's a correction, it's not the right time to do it wow. because they're not ready to receive it. Number eight, this is, a, this is a top one. Yeah, gossiping words cause great damage. Proverbs 26, 20 through 22, where there is no wood, the fire goes out. Where there is no tail bearer, strife ceases. As charcoal is to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tail-bearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the innermost parts of the body. Uh, gossip, talking about other people. People love to hear it. Their whole magazines are d dedicated to it. Yeah. That's what a lot about Facebook is, Twitter, all those things. We love to hear about other people's It's flaws. destroyed many a church. Yes. Number nine. Uh, complaining words drain life. Uh, there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. The Bible says it's better to live on the top of a house, in the corner of a housetop, than with a brawling woman in a, in a mansion. Complaining words drain the energy and life out of those around Share us. Share Christ with somebody. The greatest words in all the universe are those are the words of Christ. When the, Jesus was talking about what it meant to be a believer and be a true believer, and some disciples left, he turned to those who were there and said, will you leave also? And their response was, to whom shall we go? You have the words of life. The words of life of Jesus Christ are that he was and is the Son of God who came to die on the cross, shed his blood for us, rise from the dead, ascend to the Father, that he might provide for us forgiveness, salvation, eternal life, adoption into the family, to be made part of the, of the bride for the groom that who's coming to get us someday. It came from his words, the truth, that you and I are sinners and we need to be saved. The Bible says in Jesus' own words, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The words of life that give us new life also affect the words that come out of our mouth and we should be sharing the words of life with others every day. This is your opportunity to go back to what we've just read and change your life for the rest of the day. God bless you. Bye-bye.